Ah, oh, my mouth hurts. Hello, anybody, and welcome back to Let's Play Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards. I'm Mr. Debius, or just Deeb, and in the last episode, we finished up Aqua Star. And in today's episode, we're starting on Neo Star. I think it's called Neo Star because it's supposed to be like a newly born planet with a lot of fauna and a growth that makes it fairly prehistoric in nature, and that's the whole aesthetic. And we're going to be seeing that with this big jungle area. So the first thing we're going to get is a stone because. And we're going to die! Fantastic opening. You may remember that health doesn't recover between levels, and that's actually an unusual feature of Kirby games, because most games heal your health between levels, as far as I'm aware, and that's the traditional thing to do in these kinds of games, but Kirby 64 just doesn't really care. I mean, the Kirby games in general just don't really care. They just, they make it challenging. So what we want to do here is just kind of, there are pitfalls in the ground, which you might see, and we're going to want to uncover those, but be careful, because some of them have spikes. But one of the crystal shards that we're looking for in this level is underneath those spikes, so we want to be careful. Whoa! Also, I just realized this is the music from the first level in the game. Haven't heard it in a while, and it's actually kind of interesting for a jungle theme. I would say it's unfitting, but then I'm kind of tired of, like, tribal drum beats for games like these, is that wrong of me to say? It's just not what I'm fond of. And anyway, here is the crystal shard we're looking for. So don't follow your instincts that tell you to avoid the pitfalls in the ground, because that is how you get your first crystal shard in this level. And we're avoiding the stone axe. I'm interesting that the stone axe is stone instead of like cutter, because it's a cutter. And this is our second crystal shard, so wow, this is going really fast actually. But yes, you can also climb up these vines, but yeah, I guess the axe could have really gone either way, and it's not really a big deal. I'm gonna get rid of this because we've had a lot of stone in the last little while, and a lot of cutter too. So let's go with fire, because we're gonna do something with fire. As has been, this was like the first ability in the game I showed off, and you... There. As I showed off... In the beginning of the game, fire is simple, like most of the power-ups in the game. It's just a charge forward that engulfs your body in flames and generally makes your life easier by engulfing your enemies in flames. That's all there really is to say on the matter. Now, I do believe the next crystal shard we're looking for is in this room, and it's somewhere around here, whether it be up in the trees or down near the pits that would kill us. This level, this area actually feels very Donkey Kong to me because of the jungle aesthetic and jumping from vines to vines, and that's something that Donkey Kong really kind of made big. I'm not saying Donkey Kong owns jungle aesthetics in video games, but I think that's... It was one of the first games that really did it big, although if you really want to go back really far, you'd say Pitfall on the Atari was the first game that really heavily featured... Um the whole jungle aesthetic thing. And if we're gonna be going back that far to pay our roots, well, there we go. Where is the crystal shard in this area? I could have sworn it's in here. Okay, in retrospect, I don't think it's actually in here, so forget I said anything about that. Arg! Unless it's up here. No. No. That's fine. So we got this dude who is just kind of a mini-boss, but he's one of the few mini-bosses who actually attacks you back. And if it wasn't for the power-up we currently have, this fight could actually be somewhat challenging. It's certainly more challenging than all the other mini-bosses so far, but... I digress. Because there are circumstances in this room to make this a challenging fight. You got the enemies throwing spears from above, you got him able to breathe fire at you. So your strategy there is to... is to basically spit things at him and run away and keep out of range of his attacks, but there's no real reason for me- No! I didn't want that to fly away on me. I think this is the room that I'm trying to remember is where the crystal shard is in. Oh boy, I'm playing sloppy. I need to stop that. Kirby games, I find it's really easy to get into the habit of just kind of throwing yourself forward until finally you die from just hitting too much stuff. And there's the crystal shard. I should have known that Kirby games don't hide things very well. They like to hide things in plain sight. Whoa! Those drop really fast, so you gotta be ready to react when those fall. And thankfully, even though we're at one heart, we got some invincibility. 
you just kind of plow through these sections. Invincibility in games, I find, is kind of an interesting concept because whenever the game elects to give you invincibility power-ups, the uh, following section has to be designed in such a way to uh, maximize the ability of the invincibility. Or otherwise it doesn't and it feels useless and it wears off right then because this game doesn't give good indication of when your invincibility is wearing off. That's okay. I'm okay. I should be eating the tomatoes instead of getting these cards. But force a habit, completionist force a habit, and I'm sorry, that's just the way I am. I'm so sorry. Anyway, just a moment. Okay, I was just double checking something. Um, if you wanted to see a new power up uh, sometime in this video, that's become more unlikely because now we have to go back to Popstar and get ourselves dynamite. And the reason we need dynamite is because the next level will need dynamite in order to get a crystal shard, but you can't get dynamite in that level, as far as I'm aware. Get over it. No! Okay, we got the dynamite. I'm happy. And now let's go back over to Neostar. I love how quick that is in getting things. Like, I love how you can just kind of pop in and out of levels and just get a power-up. But I don't like the fact that uh, the crystal shard in this level... Um, also, yes, you do fall in a pit, and this is where one of the crystal shards is. You have to veer hard to the left. This is the first level in the game where there is a crystal shard that you need powers from outside the level in order to get. So we fall into this giant crevice in the ground on this prehistoric planet, and there's a mine down here already. I guess Waddle Dees work very fast at building things. And like the vehicle section that was a downhill raft in the previous world, we're now riding on a minecart. This is great. Waddle Dee will tell you when to jump. Exclamation mark means you jump, but this is this is fun. This is great. I mean, who wouldn't love this? And I jumped over the crystal shard. That's great. Well, better die. Because I am not going through the level without getting the crystal sh Is it actually possible to die here? I'm not even pressing anything. <laughs> um I mean you can hurt us, and we can get hurt. Don't tell me I'm going to get through this section without the crystal shard. This is embarrassing. Oh my god, I can't believe that section. Ah. Oh. And that's how you get that. So it's actually remarkably hard to die in this section. I'll see you after the section because we've already done it. And down we fall again. I can't believe the level did that. It just, it just kind of, it doesn't sit well with me that that whole section is mostly just kind of... A... And I killed myself because I forgot that dynamite does that. Now I have to go outside the level and get dynamite again. I'll be right back. And we are back. Now that we have dynamite again and gone through that first section of the level, thankfully it's short. Unthankfully, I wish that we didn't have to go outside the level to get the power-ups that we need in order to get the crystal shard in question. Especially since I've already shown off dynamite. I wish I didn't have to show it off again. I mean, I like dynamite, dynamite but now we're forced to kind of hang on to it for the whole level. And I like dynamite, as I literally just said, but... I... So I want to show off like as many of the power-ups in the game as I can, and I kind of haven't been able to do that, or I've kind of been slacking on that in the past couple episodes. But I guess that's... Blow yourself up. Gotta be careful not to blow yourself up in this level. This isn't actually the most optimal level for dynamite, because the enemies are a little tricky to hit with the dynamite in a way that you can get under your hat at the same time. And also there's a lot of invincible traps that are just out to get you. And remember, you can have your power-up knocked out of you. So, took off the hat too quickly. So, oh god. So remember to be careful in this section for the love of all things holy and great. Just gonna keep running along here. This section isn't too bad. Just some cannons from above, but also, also a water that did damage to us too. And, oh man, if I die here, that's gonna suck. Really... It's become in my best interests to just kind of take the pacifist route, and that cannon aims at you. That's not cool. Like I said, it's just kind of easy to get reckless. 
I know it's my fault. It's not the game's fault at all. It's, it just feels like it's easy to get reckless in Kirby games and to just kind of rush on ahead more so than other games, I find, and I'm not sure why that is. I think, thankfully, though, we're getting close to where we want to be. And with Dynamite, it's particularly dangerous because, as you can see, it hurts you too. And now we're in an area with enemies that... Oh, that killed me! Oh, I'll be back. Fall down the pit. Ride the minecart. Get in an accident. Avoid cannons. And we're back. We are just about where we were. And I think this is exactly where we were when we died. But now things should be okay because now we have five health. And I am sorry for that just lackluster performance that I was giving earlier. If I get to the end of this level and it turns out that there was stone and dynamite, I'm going to be mad. Like, not really all that mad. Because this is mostly my fault and I own up to it. But... Jeez, dynamite takes forever to explode if you don't hit directly. I'm kind of having second thoughts about my relationship with dynamite. It's not the same as I remember. I mean, if you can hit with it, that's great. You're golden. But as the game goes on, it gets harder to hit enemies with the dynamite in such a way that you can pull off getting down. Ah! Getting off your helmet. Or getting your helmet on. And for that, it's challenging. But I think we're actually really close to where I want to be. This section right here actually is good for dynamite, and that's great. And there we go. Explode. Go. There we go. And that gets us this crystal shard. And there's an extra life in there if you want. I'm gonna get rid of the dynamite because it just doesn't do us very good. Now the thing about Kirby games is actually the inhale ability stays useful for pretty much the entire game. Even though powers are great at dealing with bosses, the fact of the matter is, well, there are times when power-ups are just going to be better, but you, inhaling is just kind of a useful thing. But here we have a mini-boss that's just great for the cutter ability, because it sweeps along the floor and just messes up these groups of water. These Actually, I don't think these are water. I think these are supposed to be like single-celled organisms, with the red thing being the nucleus. But we have all of the crystal shards, so we got everything we need. This level kind of goes on for a while, to be entirely honest. And I kind of don't know how long this episode is going to be because so much of it is just redoing sections I've already done. These platforms are instant kill. You don't want to be squished or you'll die. Kirby, even though he's fairly malleable, he can't be squished outright or else that's just... No, that just doesn't go for him. And... But, I mean, his thrown face is invincible, so there's that, I suppose. But anyway, we are done digging through the sediment of this prehistoric land, and we are going to get ourselves that card right over there. Yay, cards. Now, do I have time to do another level? Possibly, but I think I'm going to save this for the next episode. I think I'm going to save the rest of Neostar and try to finish it all in one clean swoop in the next episode so we don't get divided up between planets kind of and get them in weird sections like we had with the first few planets so this will help compartmental car, car, compartmentalize things a little bit so i hope you enjoyed this episode sorry i played a little a lot more poorly than i usually do and if you want to see more of kirby 64 then i just hope to see somebody in the next one Bye bye